what are you doing to get such consistent performance? Well, I think we have a different model that we take advantage of where we look at companies based upon different risk factors. Uh, while everybody always looks at you know earnings multiples, cash flow multiples, we have to risk adjust those uh, because we have companies operating in Kyrgyzstan, Nevada, Canada, and dollars earned in Kyrgyzstan have a different valuation than dollars earned in Nevada. So it's trying to find a way to level set those to come up with the good, pro the proper valuations that we want to buy those companies at. How do things change in an environment where the dollar is rising? Uh, dollar rising actually will help with local currency cost. Uh, it does put a headwind in terms of gold itself uh, because they're at the opposite spectrums of the currency uh, con continuum. So dollar being the ultimate paper currency and gold being the ultimate hard currency, they typically move at different, they're uncorrelated assets. They typically move in different directions except for in a time of fear. Uh, so it puts a headwind on gold. But in terms of operations, it's actually a benefit because most costs are in local currency while the revenues are in dollars. Gold prices have been interesting. Obviously, they've been down, and that's yes. one reason why uh, the fund reflected that. But will we see a change in gold prices this year if there is indeed a concern about inflation? And there's just whispers of that out now. I mean, it's almost wishful thinking yes. that inflation will be rising after what we've been through. But does that change the dynamics of gold this year? It does change it, but you know, it, anything that creates interest for investors in gold you know, will change the dynamics. We've been seeing outflows of the gold ETF and now the gold market because there's little interest in it because there's not really fears about inflation. There's not fears about what's going on with the U.S. government debate, not fears about Europe at the moment, or even people paying attention to Japan wanting to uh, uh, deflate their currency and actually start putting inflation into their market. So investors aren't focused on that, and when they do come back, you're going to see fund flows change in the gold space, and it should pick up gold prices themselves. Right now, people are apathetic about risk, mostly focused on the equity markets making new highs. Uh, when they start focusing on some of the issues out there, they'll come back to the gold market eventually. Tell me about some of the mining stock that, stocks that you're holding now that are very promising in terms of returns this year. What do you like? As you mentioned, you're all over the world in terms of your investment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's many places you can go, and you just got to try to find the right companies and the right valuations. There are a lot of companies who have been investing in growth projects who are going to start delivering those projects. Uh, a company like Gold Corp, who uh, has the large Penasquito mine in uh, Mexico. They also have the... Um, uh, mine they just delivered as a partnership with Barrick down in the uh, Dominican Republic, Pueblo Viejo. All those are going to drive uh, new growth in terms of their gold production. They're also focusing on cost now, and that, that cost is cost controls are going to help as well. But as Gold Corp moves into a free cash flow situation, they're going to be able to increase the dividend. They're paying a monthly dividend now. They're going to return that capital to shareholders, which would be good. Newcrest is another large company. They're based in Australia. They have some of the largest long life. Uh, uh, deposits, gold deposits in the world. They've delivered two new projects this year, Cadia Valley and an expansion at the Lahir project in Papua New Guinea. So the cash flow they've been spending on those projects is going to come to an end. They're going to start generating free cash flow, start returning that to shareholders as well. That will generate interest for those companies also. How about another big company like Newmont? Newmont is going through changes. Mm -hmm. their, their growth has been challenged. They're having trouble in Peru with the Yanacocha mine, uh, getting into the new growth phase for that. They need to work harder on their cost controls. They have a new CEO. They just replaced uh, Dick O'Brien, who left. Uh, I think they're going to focus on right-sizing the company, focus on cost. If they get it right, I think that you could have a chance there, but they still have a lot of work to do at Newmont. You mentioned two companies where dividends are likely to rise. In general, do you see rising dividends in the mining stock space this year? Yes, I think in general that's been a focus. If you have discussions with any of the CEOs, they're all talking about changing the mindset. Uh, looking at not just how they spend cap capital in terms of capex, but if they have excess cash flow, returning that to shareholders, so they can see a return. Yeah, and that's one way they can demonstrate value. The question, some of the question you get is, do I own gold or do I own gold miners? Uh, gold doesn't pay a dividend, so if the miners are paying dividends, that gives one reason for investors to go in that direction versus just owning a gold ETF. 
What's the biggest risk for investing in this space for you this year in terms of the, the mining stocks? I, you know, probably the biggest risk is gold price, and if that continues to, to go down, uh, you know, until there's a catalyst, it's a market looking for a catalyst. Uh, we could drift lower as fund flows continue to go against the gold price. So I think we are price dependent at the moment. There's always company specific risk. There's always political risk in all these companies. Uh, you have to be mindful of the risk and make sure you're getting paid for that risk in terms of the valuations.